Sewage treatment is arguably one of the most important aspects of modern life. What makes the world we live in today so much different from what people used to live in uh, in you know the mid 1600s in France, for instance, where you had outbreaks of cholera and all these other terrible things because people didn't have proper ways of disposing of their wastewater. And so in this video, what I'd like to do is go over how chemical engineers are playing integral roles in how society today can actually process wastewater into environmentally friendly solutions. And so it's a pretty cool process. Um, and if you ever get a chance to, I highly recommend uh, visiting your local county's sanitary district and just getting a feel for the scale and the size of everything. It's really cool stuff. And if you're a chemical engineer, you're gonna see a lot of what you've learned in the classroom applied to the real world. And so the first thing that uh, will happen to the sewer water uh, is that we will perform the primary uh, filtration um, and in this case what we do is we simply let uh, the density difference separate our mixture and so what you'll see from aerial pictures of uh, waste treatment plants are things referred to as clarification tanks and these tanks are enormous they are tens of thousands of liters in size each uh, they look like um, from the air you'll just see a circle but they are very large uh, cylinders and the diameter of these things uh, can approach tens of meters uh, in size and what you'll find in them are these metal arms that will swing around uh, with some angular frequency omega, for instance. And what they do is they support these hoses that will, um, as they travel around, uh, suction up the densest part of our solution um, and uh, transport that to a different part of the plant, uh, specifically to furnaces where um, it will be burned. And so um, this is a very initial crude kind of filtration step that takes place. And on the outer perimeter of these clarification tanks, the water will be spilling over into these uh, channels. And from these channels, they're pumped onto the secondary processing in which we are essentially doing a bacteria culture to consume all of the nutrients that are present in our wastewater. And uh, the reason we need to do this is because if we simply dumped this water at this sorry at this point uh, into the bay, for instance, what you'll find is that we're going to get algae or algal blooms, and algal blooms are very detrimental to uh, local marine ecosystems, and so we need to uh, prevent that from happening. And so, what you'll find in, at these macro level or macro scale um, bacteria cultures is, again, we're gonna probably be working with some kind of CSTR, you can almost think of it as. And at the bottom, we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna need to bubble oxygen through. So we wanna keep O2 levels high inside of these tanks where we have the bacteria processing the uh, wastewater. And the reason for that is because the bacteria need to perform cellular respiration and um, therefore they need O2 to do that. And so um, once the bacteria have removed as many of the nutrients as they can from our solution, um, I'll define some variable of CS, for instance, for the substrate levels. We're gonna decrease the levels of substrate. Um, so algae can't use it. Um, in, in addition to this, um, there are some uh, sanitary districts that will try out different strains of bacteria to consume the nitrates and other nutrients that um, algae are known to uh, consume in order to proliferate in local uh, ecosystems. And so uh, that's a, a big part of this too, is you'll have technicians in labs um, periodically doing samples to make sure that your product is uh, will be environmentally friendly at the end of the day. The next thing that happens um, after the bacteria have consumed all the nutrients is we will hit our solution with very intense UV lights and we're processing 
tens of thousands of gallons of this every hour. Um, and so what the UV light will do is it will kill um, all the life that is present, so the bacteria included um, in our solution. And uh, after it does that, the next step is to, um, again, kind of aerate the water because we need to keep O2 levels at a particular level such that we don't kill um, to not kill sorry to not kill fish so if we took the water at this point and dumped it into the bay the problem we'd run into is a lot of fish would die because um, there's so low oxygen concentrations that uh, the fish can't live in those kinds of environments because they can't perform cellular respiration either um, And so after this point, uh, it actually will go out to the bay, for instance. And the thing to ask at this point is, how do you do that? And so we have enormous pumps um, that are used in practice to move these volumes of water. And what you'll find in uh, sanitary districts often is we use the steam uh, from the furnaces and so these furnaces are what um, took in and burned the uh, dense biomass uh, at the bottom of these clarification tanks but we can also use these furnaces to heat up steam and these steam or the steam will be used to power the pumps to get the water out to the bay after it's been processed um, through the sanitation uh, plant. And so if you remember uh, thermodynamics from uh, chemical engineering program, you'll appreciate the, the need for steam tables and how you determine the energy that's present and how much work we're going to be able to do with a particular steam temperature and a pressure uh, difference with these pumps to actually get uh, the, a, a required volume of water out depending on um, the needs at a particular point in time. And so it is all very cool stuff that kind of ties together why chemical engineering is so important in everyday life that I really like to um, mention it. And I hope it can interest some people into looking into this if they're chemical engineers. Let me know if you guys have any questions and thanks for watching.